Hello, everyone. Welcome to Pay to Pay Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Willie Morales. And on today's show, I have Justin Nelson, who is the CEO of Sphere Rocket. Justin, thank you so much for being on Pay to Pay Real Estate. How are you? Absolutely great, man. And thank you, William, for having me on. I've been listening to your show now for, I really appreciate the opportunity to come on and uh, chat with you and pick your brain a little bit. Well, listen, I, I think we're going to pick your brain. You're, you're, you're the CEO, <laughs> so we got to look at look for you for answers. <laughs> so anyway, so Justin, how did you start in real estate? What made you get into that field? And were you always entrepreneurial uh, when you were growing up? Yeah, great question. So I actually got into the real estate space when I was 15 years old. Uh, my dad got into real estate when I was in fifth, when I was 15 as well. So it was really cool because um, I kind of got to start the business from scratch with him. It wasn't like a business that I was like given or handed over or was established. So it was really cool that I get to build it with them. So at 15, I kind of got to do everything. I was an inside sales agent, making phone calls, um, cold calls, you know, sell my owners, like Craigslist leads, like the whole nine yards. So I kind of got that start when I was 15, 16 years old. And then, um, you know, I ended up graduating Val Victorian and I'm like, well, I have to go to college, right? Like it's what you have to do. Like Val Victorian can't drop out. And so I went to college for a year, but then just decided, you know what? I like this real estate stuff that I've been doing for three, four years now. And that's kind of how I got my feet wet into real estate. So I kind of got lucky um, that I had someone already kind of in it. No, but that's amazing, though, because even at that age, you know, a lot of us, you're 15, 16, 17, you know, you want to go hang out with your friends, play ball, whatever, but you knew at an early age that this is what you wanted to do. And, and listen, and, and, and thank God for your dad that he wanted to help you out, which is perfect. So tell us a little bit about uh, Sphere Rocket VA. So let's start with, yeah. uh, you know, we got like three sections. We'll talk about Spe uh, Sphere Rocket VA, Social Media Mastery, and the LinkedIn Automation. So let's start with Sphere Rocket. Um, how did you see there was a need um, for, for this space for, the, for VAs? Where did you see it? How did you see yeah. it? And how did you move forward with it? Yeah, so it actually kind of started off with the next point that we'll talk about was with the social media sales. So when I was originally a real estate agent, I ended up growing the real estate team, growing the team to 15, 20 agents at any given time, opening expansion sites. And we did all business off of social media, all of it, almost like I'd say 80 plus percent. And so as we did that, at the time I was with Keller Williams and we started to get noticed around the nation and they were like, Hey, can you come and speak across the nation? How you did this? And then eventually I ended up just speaking on the road about 300 days a year. And as I wow. did that, that kind of led me to growing a real estate social media program because people are like, can you just tell us how to do what you guys did? So I ended up selling out the portion of my dad's team that I owned. I ended up going on the road, living full-time teaching, and we sold you know, social media programs to real estate agents across the country. And so but that kind of is what led me into the virtual assistant space because you know, as the market got really good and people got busier and busier and busier, they were forgetting to do their social media, even if they knew how to do it and they had all the skills. And so people started to go, hey, can we use a virtual assistant? Because they had heard about how I was using virtual assistants. And I said, absolutely, I can get you one. And so that's how the business was founded is, you know, people going, hey, can you get me a virtual assistant that's already been trained on your social media skills? that I can plug into my business so I don't have to do anything. So that was kind of how that was founded. I never, I never intended to start a VA business, never intended to do any of that. It all just kind of came out of a market need for something that we were already serving in the social media niche. Isn't that always the case? It's just filling that need. So yeah. real estate seems to be where VAs are needed most lately. I'm going by what my circle of friends are telling me and all that, but most yeah. of the VAs that they're looking for, it seems to be making phone calls and receiving phone calls. And that seems to be uh, an up and down scenario, if that makes mm -hmm. sense, because a lot of my friends yeah. that are in business say, man, I can't find a VA. I don't know where to look. I'm looking, and they're looking overseas now. Um, mm -hmm. What type of training there is for the for the VA is there for the VAs to help these investors, especially let's let's do the cold call calling part and receiving yeah. phone calls. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, really, at the end of the day, here's what we we say that when it comes to making phone calls, you can have the best training ever, or the worst training ever. It all comes down to that person. Even the best people with the best scripts 
they don't like sitting on the phone usually eight hours a day. And so what it really comes down to is the right person having the right job, right? Making sure mm -hmm. that they have the right equipment. And so for us, what we found is in that field of why it's an up and down roller coaster is because there's such high turnover. And so if you as a real estate agent go and spend weeks finding an awesome candidate, then you spend weeks training them and then you don't like them. Well, now you, you, you usually are not going to get rid of them because you are afraid of going through that rehiring process, right? So you right. keep someone longer than they probably should be there. And for us, since we kind of take off the hiring process from people, you know, we tell people, hey, we got you a VA. We, even if that VA doesn't work out, which is okay. Like we, we embrace as a company that not all placements work out. Someone can go to us and go, hey, Justin, due to your guys' policy of getting me a new one at no cost, can you get me one tomorrow? And so when we do that over and over again, you know, don't get me wrong, we hit the first one on the head a lot of times to be the perfect person. But right. if it's not, then what really makes our success rate so high is someone can snap their fingers and go, Justin, I need another one, and we'll have someone else in that place. And so we've kind of gotten rid of that issue of, I am afraid to get rid of one that's not working out because I have to go hire him again. With the way we're set up, people can come to us and go, hey, I don't like them. Get me a new one. And they don't feel afraid to do that because they know it's not going to take them any more time out of their day to just come to us and ask us for a new one. So we feel that, you know, I don't really think a lot of the different places are doing anything wrong with their training of VAs. It's all about the process on if you need a replacement. I think that's one of the biggest key differences because, I mean, I kind of tell uh, how many times have you seen like a big Fortune 500 company go out and try to find a CEO. They spend years, they spend yeah. hundreds of millions and they still hire the wrong person, right? Yeah, and then they bring an underdog in. <laughs> and so, I mean, heck, I mean, I'm not political, but you talk about like a presidential like craziness, like you would think that it's the same thing there, right? If you know, it's the same thing. It's, it's all about having the right person in the right seat. And if you need the replacement, being able to replace them right away. And so that's really what I think to answer your question is, you know, I don't worry as much about the training as I do the process. If, if that person comes in, are they going to work or not? And if they don't, how can I replace them super fast? Because I truly believe people like yourself that put out a lot of content right here have produced this ecosystem in the world of YouTube podcast that yeah. there's no shortage of training. There's no shortage of training. It's always usually a shortage of the right people in the right seats for you. Yeah, you know, it, it, uh, I'm glad you touched on that point because I remember reading, I think it was Warren Buffett's uh, biography, and he was talking about how, you know, when he buys a company, he always looks at the management as one of his top priorities. And if the management is working well, he just leaves them alone. You know, hey, yeah. do your job. You're the right person for this, yeah. for this position. Thank you. So when you train the VAs, uh, like when the real, uh, let's say a real estate investor comes to you and said, Justin, I'm looking for uh, just data entry. Um, yeah. No calling. I could do the call, but I'm looking for data entry. Are they trained in specific uh, areas of the real estate field, whether it's data entry, cold calling, or, or, um, or getting documents together? Is that, are they trained in certain uh, aspects of the, of the business? They are, they are. So we're a super custom solution. So if someone needs that training, absolutely. However, I, I will say just like in the, you know, I think a lot of times when we go overseas to get virtual assistance, for some reason, there's this myth that they should know everything about how to do something or they should be trained on it. I kind of compare it to an example. Let's say that you were to hire an assistant that sat right next to you tomorrow. Well, when you went out and hired them, most likely you're going to go one of two routes. You're either going to go and find someone that's brand new that you're willing to train, that you're willing to groom the way you want them to be groomed. And they're going to get, they're probably going to make a little bit less per hour, right? Or you could spend a little bit more per hour and come with someone that already has experience in that, right? So if, if for you, it was real estate investing. We could go find someone that were like, you know what? They don't really have a lot of knowledge in this field, but they've been in corporate industry for 20 years. They have a background of managing people, doing project management. I think they're going to be great this job, right? right? Or you can go, hey, I want someone that's actually done this exact job for many years. You'll have to pay a little bit more, but you'll obviously, you know, cut the learning curve out of that quite a bit. And so, you know, while we can provide training, I'm pretty much here within that. You know, we also find that a lot of people are like, you know what, I already have what I need them to do. I just need the right Right. So some people tell us they don't even need our training. Some people are like, you know what, I'll use your training in combination with mine. And then other people will also go, wait, you can, you just found me someone that already knows it all. They're actually going to teach me now how to do it. Right. <laughs> right. Right. And that's, so, that's great. 
And so that's where we really have to just talk to each person and see what's their budget. What are they wanting to spend? You know, and when you go overseas, the difference between $2 an hour and $6 an hour is the same difference as 30,000 a year and a hundred thousand a year. Wow. And so okay. like you can, so we'll, we can kind of, you know, customize it to what you're looking for in, in, in an assistant. Okay. No, that's great. I mean, so when you, when you, so we'll, in fact, we'll get to that in, yeah. in, in, in the uh, third segment or the second segment about how you find them, but how in reality, do they help the real estate agent, you know, VA, like what, what are they looking for? The agents, like they come to you and say, Justin, I need help doing this. That is it marketing, what, which we'll get to in the next segment, but how they do, how do they help the real estate agent? Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, there is, I always say this, if there is anything in your business that does not require a physical presence, a VA can do it literally mm. anything. And so if it does not require a physical presence, a VA can do it. Now, a lot of people listening might have some limiting beliefs like, Oh, a VA can't do that. Like they would never be able to make my Facebook post or, Hey, they would never be able to reach out to homeowners that may be looking to sell a property or, Hey, they would never be able to make cash offers on my behalf to homeowners or different things like that. And so I literally say anything that doesn't require physical presence can be done. I mean, I have a VA right now working for me. Um, she's my CEO. She makes about $6 an hour and she runs two quarter million dollar companies for me from top to oh, bottom. Wow. Okay. And, wow, so that's amazing. It's, and that includes everything, right? That includes technology, marketing, management of people, HR, you know, so really there's no limit to what they can or can't do. So I, th I just tell everybody that's listening, look at your, your business, tape a GoPro to yourself, just watch what you do all day. <laughs> if it doesn't require physical presence, that's what a VA can do for you. And it's usually like, you, listen, it, it's perfect. F making phone calls, receiving phone calls, mm -hmm. which a lot of investors yeah. don't like to do. And, yeah. and then the data, and data entry. So that's a few things. Yeah, you're right. That it doesn't require you to be there or the VA to be, VA to be there because you can do it through uh, Google Docs or whatever. So let's touch on social exactly. media for a second, Justin, because it seems like there's so many, uh, if you want to call it apps or platforms, as Facebook, uh, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, TikTok, and on and on and on. How do you know which platform works for you? Do you test all of them out? Or you go by word of mouth of, of some of the investors you talk to or some of your friends? Yeah. Like, it, it, it seems like there's so much now social media content out there in terms of uh, apps and platforms. Yeah, so I mean, for us, it's really, really easy. We're looking at who is the demographic of who we're trying to buy homes from on the investor side of list, right? Usually, you're not, as an investor, you're not usually finding a whole bunch of 20 and young 30 year olds that have gone into foreclosure or that have gone into short sale status or, you know, that are, you know, notice of default or, you know, you, you find that that's not really your target market because they've just gotten into their home. They can make it work. They're just getting life. They haven't acquired a lot of debt. Like sure they got some college debt, but usually that's not your target market. Like if you were to go into your investor portfolio and look at who you actually bought homes from, yeah. You know, you're going to find a very niche market. And when we find that niche market, 99% of the time, it's usually like a 55 year old in a certain city. And I'm like, okay, well, where's that 55 year old going to be? Right. And for some cities, it's much older, right? People that are getting rid of homes, inherited homes. And when we look at it and when we compare it to the platforms, most of the demographics not on Instagram, they're not on Twitter on TikTok, <laughs> Snapchat, almost all of them are on Facebook, right? A lot sure. of the times why I think the investor mm. world thinks there's more platforms is because people that are selling investor, like for example, like I have a product that investors can use. So for me, I use places like Instagram and Twitter and all these different things to let investors know because investors are usually as well on all those for reasons. And I'm letting them know about my product from there. But when it comes to them actually delivering you know, information to the community, usually their niche market is in Instagram. It's not usually flooding, you know, TikTok or Snapchat. Almost 99% of the time, those people are on Facebook. Wow. Okay. So, and so then from there, you narrowed that, you narrowed down your, your demographic of who do you want to target? Like you said, it might be 50 to 60 year olds or 30. So because you could do that on, on the Facebook marketplace. Am I correct in that? Cause I haven't even used well, it yet, but I've heard about it. Yeah. So yeah. So when you run ads, you can mark it down. There's some restrictions and some different things like that. Um, now with the fair housing laws and some different things that Facebook's yeah. done, but really we just take a generality. Facebook's got older people on it. The stats show it. And if my demographics older, I'm not going to go spend a lot of time on other platforms chasing 
other platforms where my my user's not on there. No, that makes sense. So uh, do your clients use uh, paid ads and free ads to, to market their business? Do you recommend that they do that? Yeah. Or you prefer the paid ads because it, it might have more, uh, let's say, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the data is more available with paid ads than with free ads. Yeah. Did that, so, did that make so, sense at all? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, on the investor side, I love free ads. If someone's just getting started, free ads are by far the best. Use okay. the VA to do free ads, great, greater return on investment, less pressure. If you've been an investor for a while and you're ready to start running ads, you're going to need a budget, right? You're going to need yes. several thousand dollars a month at a minimum to do it. And so, of course, your level of recouping ROI can be higher, but so does your entry level cost. Instead of maybe being able to get away with a thousand a month, you might be spending 5,000 a month at the start. And so I would say both are great, but for 90 plus percent of investors that are just getting their feet wet in this world, um, the free side is all they need. Okay. And, uh, and I know, um, so that just to touch, ba touch base on that again, would it be like a Craigslist ad or getting on Zillow, uh, Snapchat? I mean, all, all of the above. All of the above. Yeah, all okay. The, yep. Okay. That's great. So like when you look for the VAs, like do the VAs look for you? Like they see as that you might place somewhere, whether it's Facebook or Craigslist yeah. or any other plan or indeed.com, whatever it is. Do they find you and then they say, hey, I'm looking, I could do this and uh, I, I have real estate experience before. Um, how do you find your yeah. VAs? Yeah, so we have a recruitment team of 14 people in the Philippines that work for me full time. Their only okay. job is to headhunt talent. Now, I, I always say, how do you headhunt talent in the United States? It's all listed, right? Referrals, yeah. job fairs, everything that you can think of are things that we're doing over there to find talent. So I always say, same thing you do in America to find talent, we're doing over there for you. The biggest gap is most people can't do that overseas because they're not used to the culture or the norms or the hours. And so that's a big value of ours is to be able to do that for them. Okay, no, so that's great. So now we know it's definitely, uh, it's amazing that you, you, you were able to build teams in certain, uh, it's certain areas and funnels of your business. So let's talk about yeah. LinkedIn automation and what is LinkedIn automation? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of people have probably been getting, if you've been on LinkedIn for any amount of time, you've probably seen it, right? You've probably seen it. It kind of looks like spam to a degree. It's basically when you connect with someone, you immediately get a message from them. Oh my you're like, God, you're right about that. <laughs> you're like immediately, like, you know, like where'd it come from? They're using automation tools. Now, just like anything else in the world, there's, there's, there, there's, a, there's a wrong way to use things and there's the right way to use things, right? And so for us, we use automation tools on LinkedIn to be able to connect with about 100 to 200 people a day. And so LinkedIn allows you to have 30,000 connections on LinkedIn. Facebook only like a thousand friends. And so for a lot of us, we already have 5,000 friends on Facebook. We maxed it out. And why did we max it out? Because we want to know everybody. So that way we get more transactions, get more people, right? Yeah. And so when it comes to LinkedIn, you would never be able to get to 30,000 just by clicking connect, connect, connect. Like it would just take 10, 15 years. And so for, there's a lot of automation tools that exist to be able to help that process and be able to supercharge that. So that's another thing our company does because a lot of people that are coming to us want to connect with certain demographics of people and LinkedIn's the best platform for that. Do you use, um, like you just said, you know, like some of these, and which is true because when I, somebody sends me this message and then I accept, all of a sudden I got an email like five seconds later, Hey, I have this product. I think it'll fit you, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Um, are videos important part of your business in terms of recruitment or, or at least yeah. uh, on the investment side, does like YouTube or do you use uh, Facebook uh, videos or anything like that? How, yeah. how, how, do, how do they come into play for you? Yeah, most of it's Facebook for us. I mean, we're, we're, okay. again, I'm still mostly on Facebook. My demographic for me is older. YouTube will be better than other platforms, but we still find Facebook to be the absolute place of where they're at. Mm, okay. Wow. I didn't know that. Um, what is it about Facebook that you like better than, um, than let's say, uh, YouTube, in, in your opinion? Yeah. Literally just age demographic. That is uh -huh. it. The age demographic and my ability to know who's watching my stuff. If someone messages me on Facebook, I can message them back. If someone comes and watches Ooh. my YouTube channel, I never even know. If my YouTube video says 30 views, I have no clue who the 30 people were. It doesn't tell me unless they liked it or commented on Facebook. If they comment message or they're my friend, I can message them at any given time. 
Wow, I, I never thought about that because you're right. You know, I get these comments on, uh, you know, on, mm -hmm. on YouTube, and yeah, I, I see who it is. But if somebody yep. even uh, uh, subscribed to my page, nine out of ten mm -hmm. times, I don't even know who it is. You know, it doesn't exactly. give you that demographic. Exactly. Yeah, it doesn't give you who it is. So tell us about your training program and who who should and can apply. Yeah, absolutely. So our training program is pretty straightforward. If you are anything in the real estate space. I mean, you can really be in any space to be honest with you, but 90 plus percent of our customers are in the real estate space. If you're in the real estate space and you have things in your business that you don't like to do or aren't good at, and you have the budget to spend $700 a month, because that's what more spends, $4 an hour for a full-time VA. If, if your life would be better with a full-time person at your call to help you with your business for $700 a month, that is who can apply. Yeah, right? gotcha. not someone that just needs someone for five hours to spend twenty dollars here. For someone that's looking for let and that you know seven thousand seven hundred a month, that's like seven thousand a year. And for most investors, that's like one that's one assignment. That is one fix and flip. That's one you know buy and hold. Like for everybody in the investor world, seven thousand dollars is relatively nothing. If it's a lot to you, still not a problem. We're still here for whenever you're ready. But our average consumer is about seven thousand dollars a year to get a VA. And you know a lot of investors don't get assistance because they don't want to go spend thirty or forty thousand that their market requires for them to spend. Yeah, I mean, this is a cheaper way. Plus, they're trained in what they, uh, what you want them to do, which is a perfect exactly. a, a, a perfect business model. So, exactly. for you and, and your company, what's next? Like during yeah. the, with what's happening with the world today, with the pandemic and all that, has has it affected business in any way? And you know, and it how do you, and how do you see how do you see it going forward for you for your company? Yeah, so I mean, it, it, it's shot our company three x bigger because people now accept the fact that you can have virtual employees and not have problems. Right. And so our company exploded in growth during COVID actually. Um, and so I think it'll just keep doing that. People are accepting more and more what corporations were doing for years and outsourcing and small business will start to pick up on that even more than ever. No, you know, you're absolutely right. Because look at these big companies that have all, they outsource everything mm -hmm. to whether it's India or their call yep. centers around the world. Yeah. And then, you know, it's funny that you say that because uh, I think it was on CNBC about six, seven months ago, this one investor sees his office uh, people working more from home, at least 20% of it. Cause he said yeah. that he, one, he saved a lot more money. And two, he said that his people were very productive because they were working yeah. nine, 10, 11 hour shifts because either they were taking care of a loved one or a yeah. newborn baby. And so he, he, he's looking to do more and more uh, business from, <laughs> let's say home. Yeah. Um, before I let you go, a couple more questions. Um, one, first of all, Justin, thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate of it. And second, do you have a book in you? Cause this is, you got to write a book. Yeah. Or, well, or it's funny. You, so yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. yeah. So we actually do. Yeah. I was just going to say, we do actually have an ebook that we wrote for the real estate industry on the top things that we see um, real estate agents, um, VAs for real estate investors use VAs for. Um, so I'll definitely give you a free link to that, that you're more than welcome to provide your audience as well. Oh, that'd be great. I, that, I appreciate that. Um, any books you recommend that you, that you like, that you have yeah. read before and all that, any books? Four hour work week. That is what our entire Isn't that business the best? is. Built. Yes. <laughs> it is. And our entire business is built off of that. Uh, anything else that just to me that's the standard right there. I remember when that's I it. I, was, I mean, that's literally I it. I think you can take care of all problems. I think I can yeah. take care of 99 problems. I, I remember when I first read that book, Justin, I was amazed. I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. Everything is yeah. just being outsourced. And you, I, I never thought about that five, six, seven years ago. Yeah. Anyway, again, Justin, thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate it. If anybody wanted to look for you, what's the best way? Yeah, the best way is just to go to spherocket.com. That's S-P-H-E-R-E dot com so spherocket.com and any of those three things we talked about it's super easy to find us and uh yeah any questions they have it's uh all on there all right sounds good well listen justin again thank you so much i really appreciate it absolutely i appreciate it william yep take care well everyone that was justin nelson of spherocketva.com that's spherocketva.com s p h e r e rocketva.com justin thank you so much for being on p2p real estate show really appreciate it 
You can find me at peerpeerrealestate.com. That's peer number two, peerrealestate.com. Check out our past shows. Check out our blog. Also, when you get a chance, please go to iTunes. Look for us on Peer to Peer Real Estate Podcast. Please subscribe, leave a review. Tell us how we can make this show better. And before I go, guys, just a couple more things. Do not give up on your dreams. Fight for it. Guard it. Protect it. Don't let anyone talk you out of it. And I really believe if you keep the momentum going, good things will happen. On behalf of Peer to Peer Real Estate, I'm Willie Morales. Until next time, thanks, everybody. Have a great day, and please stay safe. Bye.